Well, we've got uh, 35 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce our very special guests. You know him and love him as Ty, Mr. Joshua Seth. <laughs> Returning as Sora, Colleen O'Shaughnessy. Yeah. And this gentleman has done everything with Digimon. He's written, he's voice directed. He is, of course, your voice of Tentomon, yeah. Mr. Jeff Nimoy. Yeah. And Kabuteramon. How are you? Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for having us. Look at you guys. It's great to see you again. <laughs> Say, I've seen a lot of screenings with a lot of audiences. You guys might be my favorite. <laughs> this has been fantastic. And most recent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, cool. do I'm down there making little comments to Colleen the whole time. You guys are screaming out funnier things than I am. So. <laughs> it's true. You, you said it was funnier than what he said. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering, we're, we're in our third film of Digimon Adventure Tribe. Let's go back to the beginning of this. Were you guys surprised at all when you were given the call to come back and reprise these characters? <laughs> I, I wasn't given the call. <laughs> <laughs> funny, funny story about that. Yeah. Uh, I, I was very surprised to get the call. <laughs> and uh, I went in and I recorded. I was also surprised not to get the call to write or direct. <laughs> or I was, when my last uh, stint was Digimon, I was also supervising producer. So. But, you know, I still wanted to play Tentomon, so I said yes. And I went in there and I did it, and uh, I'm like, "Who's playing what?" Blah blah blah. And, uh, and they didn't say Joshua was playing Ty. And uh, I was like, "That's that's surprising, you know. He's the star." And so, uh, so I went home and I immediately, like, you know, announced, "Hey, I'm playing Tentomon again." And I pretty much broke the internet <laughs> because Toy did not, Toy Animation did not uh, announce it yet. And Oopsie. but. But, you know, a lot of people yelled at me from Studiopolis and Toy. And then Joshua wrote me and said, hey, how come they didn't ask me to be in Digimon? <laughs> and I gave Josh the information. You can take it from there. Yeah, so uh, it's all his fault that I came back. <laughs> <laughs> and not one person from Toy or Studiopolis thanked me for getting Joshua said so into let, Digimon. Thank you, Chef Nimoy. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But it's not, well, look, it's not their fault. I mean, I kind of quit voiceovers uh, about 10 years ago to go tour uh, with my live shows. And, th but this is special. I mean, it's special to all of us. And Digimon was unique in my career. And, you know, for, it, D Digimon's its own thing. So when I heard from you guys, basically, hey, Jeff Nimoy spilled the beans. And they're, <laughs> and they're, and they're already recording. Yeah, then, then the wheels got in motion. I well, you did turn and, down yeah. a reprisal of Ty in Revenge of Di Digibormon. Yeah. It was a small role. That's why. Yeah. Right, and I think they stu that stuck with right, them, Right, but think. this, you know, movie isn't it? Yeah, right. All right. So. <laughs> and also, you know, there were some things that I missed about Los Angeles. Wanted to come back and have some Zankow chicken. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, so like enough time had gone by. So we thought, okay, let's get the gang back together. <laughs> so we did it again, just what like old times. Yeah, there you go. So I wasn't surprised. I am um, just, I was happy that, you know, Digimon was coming back. And I had heard about it at a convention in New Zealand a couple years ago. And they're like, are you going to be Sora? And I had no idea. I'm like, if they ask me, sure. But I had no idea that it was even a thing. Um, so, yeah, it's, it was kind of, it's weird. It's not, I wasn't surprised because I had heard, the, you know, at the, the convention that it was coming, but um, it's strange to come back after all this time and then you start remembering stuff and there were some things that were misspelled in the script. It, Biumon in the script said Piumon with a P and I'm like, look, I don't remember a lot, but I know that that is wrong. You can go ask Rita, but I yeah. promise you it's Biumon. I said it a billion times. And, and when I when I when it came to uh, my part where it said Tentamon Digivolve Two, um, the director said, "I'm not sure how they do this. Do they might do it like Tentamon Pause Digivolve Two or Tentamon Digivolve Pause Two, or maybe that." I'm like, "I got this, Junior. <laughs> I know how it." And, and tell the other actors this is how it's done too. They'll remember it. They'll remember anyway. But this is how it's done. I, I want to talk a little bit of inside baseball because. I think I've known a lot of voice actors. I love voice work. 
something that a lot of people don't necessarily appreciate is the amount of work that goes into voicing for original animation versus voicing for dubbing anime. Mm -hmm. You yeah. guys have it tough in, in many ways. Talk a little bit about the difference between the two. Well, look, already in voice acting, you're attempting to do what an actor uses all five senses to convey with just one. So already you're limiting your ability to communicate in a way that an actor does just because you, you can't turn to the side and lift an eyebrow and convey an emotion. So with restrictions, though, I think come more the, the opportunity uh, to innovate and to be more creative, right? If we, if we didn't have any restrictions at all, we wouldn't even know where to begin. So what I'm saying is dubbing restricts us as voice actors. Voice acting restricts us as actors, and dubbing restricts us even more. And within that structure, I think there's a lot of opportunity to, to bring your unique voice and your unique interpretation. But it's, it's so uh, locked down in terms of tempo and in terms of you know, the, the timing and the interpretation and the fact that we're having to match something that came before. Uh, that you, you really have to be on your toes and understand the technical aspect of the game as well as the creative aspect in order to bring those together. So personally, I find that challenge to be very rewarding. The difference for me, um, when, you, when you're doing original animation, um, you can do those things. Like you can, the, the animation hasn't been, hasn't been created yet. There's no drawing to go by, so you can add in different, you know, you can pause or you can have different affectations or you can have little extra things, whereas an anime, like Joshua was saying, it, it is a little more restricting because it's already there. So you have to fit whatever they've given you into the animation that's already been created. The, the other thing is you're by yourself. A lot of, most of the time with original animation, you've got the whole cast, so you're acting off of your other actors, um, which is a very different experience than having to come up with all of the emotion and everything that's happening by yourself. Um, you don't get any, you know, you don't get to hear the line before you, I mean, it's on the script, so you read it, um, but it's a, it's a lot different to have to just find that on your own as opposed to getting feedback from, a, or, you know, bouncing off of other actors. Yeah, and to uh, follow up on that, when you're doing it one at a time, if you're playing a scene of two, like, for instance, uh, I was in Trigun, I used to play this character named Wolfwood in Trigun, and <laughs> thanks for remembering, America. And, and uh, so Johnny Bosch and I used to uh, do these scenes together. And uh, who, if, like, if you went first, you had nothing to play off of. If you went second, it was a lot easier because you could just react off of what they've already recorded. But if you're first, you have to set the tone and sort of kind of like guess what they're going to do to react to this imaginary thing, you know, that you're about to play off of. So that's why directors come in handy, though. By you, you're well. <laughs> well, then, then, then I have to ask: uh, with all those challenges and all those uh, restrictions, there's got to be something that you love about this. Why animation as actors? What does animation give you the opportunity to do that maybe other mediums so? don't? I can be short and ethnically ambiguous, and it doesn't matter because I can play a little boy, I can play a, a mom, like I did in the movie. Um, you know. It, it, you, you, if you have a range, you can play a multitude of characters that you would never be able to play because you have this that you're stuck with, and you know you got what you got. So, oh, um, <laughs> but, um, but you know, it, it, uh, for me at least, like, and I love to be weird and silly and goofy, and so that's that was my an, initial love for animation to begin with. Like I always, every time I saw an animal or a baby, I would give it a voice and it, just, it would just come out. It was just kind of crazy. But um, that's for me, I like the, the silliness and weirdness and the, you can be anybody else that would, you would not normally get to play as an actor, probably on camera. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to watch Bugs Bunny. It was my favorite. And like, I was amazed that one man did all those voices, Mel Blanc, and I used to just like wanted to be versatile like that and do a, a lot of voices, and uh, and I used to sit in front of the TV on Saturday morning and watch voices come out at me, and now I sit here and watch my voice come out at me. It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty remarkable. 
For me, uh, I kind of had hippie parents, and we didn't have any TV when I was oh, young. We didn't. And in my day. In my day. Yeah. Well, it was weird because, uh, you know, it existed, but what I sort of grew up watching, like you guys, you know, watch stuff like this, um, for me, I would have these cassette tapes. I mostly read, but I had cassette tapes of old-time radio hours, you know. The Ovaltine Hour, you know. The Shadow Knows. <laughs> The Lone Ranger, those sorts of things. So those voices, those characters, Jack Benny, stuff like stuff that like my grandparents would have known. That's what I grew up listening to, and I was already very auditory and could do silly voices like you guys. But my my references were really old, uh, like that. So I actually didn't watch any TV till I got to film school. Uh, actually, Jeff and I went to the same school. We went to NYU. Not at the same time, but no. he he bonded, bonded, us, bonded us once so, we met. We had a very similar background. Yeah, bonded us friends so we, almost immediately. It was this uh, Tisch School of the Arts in New York, and uh, and that was the first time writing uh, in comedy writing class there that I was assigned to watch television and I started to see it and and one of the things that I went I was like well, I gotta start to see what popular culture is because I grew up doing theater and uh, and I there was a screening of Akira at an art house uh, movie theater yeah, in the village and I went and saw that and I came out thinking wow like this kind of everything clicked together like in terms of being able to do voices and, and being very auditory and having that background and, and then thinking this is going to be something very new and groundbreaking and, and I kind of decided at that point that I wanted to go in, into that direction because you, you, we all have talents but they're not always fulfilled like we have to find a way to put them out into the world and and that confluence of events of being in new york being at tish oh i had a radio show a radio program at the time and then seeing akira i was like oh like i could actually put one two three four five things together and people do this and it was literally i was an adult when i figured this stuff out and so the, the path unfolded from there can, can i tell some digimon stories would you mind yeah. so, uh, that's enough. No. When, uh, when uh, I first, we all auditioned for Digimon. Wendy Lee was the director. I was not the director yet. And you both played the original TK. And uh, there were like uh, 200 characters to audition for. And we like, they were like, pick two, right? And uh, I auditioned for Matt and a few uh, Digimon, none of which were Tentomon. And uh, I didn't get any of the roles, but... Uh, Josh got like a hundred goals. He got like <laughs> Modimon, Modimon. That's a lot of this stuff, yeah. yeah. And Tentomon. He was Modimon. the original Tentomon. Yeah. And, Ma and Ty, of course. And, uh, you know, they called me in to do like uh, three lines as Izzy's dad in an episode. <laughs> and they were like, hey, can you, uh, can you listen to what Josh did for Tentomon? Um, because we're going to replace him. And I was like, <laughs> Why? It sounds great. And they were like, because every, the whole show is Joshua Seppard. <laughs> and, and because Ty is such a big part of the show, we don't want the whole show to start sounding like Ty. So we're, we're, we're only going to give him Ty from now on. And they took away Tentomon and Modimon. And Josh, what he did the first time was like, Tentomon sounded a little like, like this. It was little Jackie Gleason with Johnny Carson doing Jackie Gleason. <laughs> Yeah, I, I did not know that. Right, right. right. And uh, so I started doing it, and if you see my first episode, I'm just doing a Joshua Seth impersonation. <laughs> and then after a while, which happens to all of us, the character starts to sort of become her own. And before you know it, I'm Tentamon, you know. <laughs> but I never really did get that Modimon voice. It, it was... Because you do something with your throat that I you know, can't do. Well, Steve Bloom can do it too. But I I'll give you a real it. inside baseball yeah, thing sure. about that. It's what I was doing was a reference to a show called the New Schmoo Show, Ooh. which do you even know it? How does anybody know it? Schmoo from Little Abner. You remember that? From Little Abner. Yeah. 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 It's a little bit. But sure, the New Schmoo Show. So Multi Mon, when I originated it, it was it was it was a Schmoo. I figured nobody knows. They, I'm actually curious, with the characters, Ty, Sora, Tentamon, uh, I mean, you, you just explained, talk about finding the right voice for those characters. W what was the moment that you realized, I have nailed these characters? 
<laughs> Once I figured out how to do dubbing. You're so worried my, about lip sync. Yeah. That was my first experience. You know, they're like, I'm, they're, you know, I go in, I, my agents call, they're like, oh, you, you got this part, blah, blah, blah. And you go in, and they're like, okay, here we go. And I was like, what's happening? Like, I'm hearing beeps. Like, is there something wrong with the thing? Because I don't, right. what's, why, with the, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, they, I'm not sure they know what that means. So when you, when you record, the, um, the animation is already done. And so in order for you to know when to start speaking, when the, character's mouth's gonna move, they, they play you three beats, and so you're supposed to hear the fourth beep in your head and then start talking. But I didn't know that, <laughs> I'd never done that. And in, in the audition, it, they gave you a script like they would give you for any audition, and I read the script, and I got the part, and then I went in, and there were all these beeps, and I didn't know what I was doing, and there was the screen, and then all the hawing. I mean, how many different ways can you say, huh? There's so many different ways. So for me, that was really that was really stressful, and and especially to do a lot of efforts and things that I was not comfortable doing yet. And I was like, just please don't watch me through the window because I don't I don't know what my face is doing. I don't know what my hands are doing. Um, so that for me, that was really stressful. And so I was like, character, what? I gotta fit the line in this these. In the, what are you calling those? Those are flaps, like. What? And then there's little codes in the script that I didn't know what those meant. There's a carrot and there's dots and there's, you know. So it was a big learning curve for me. I, I was like exhausted after two hours because I didn't know what I was doing. So <laughs> then that, I, I mean, character came later, but I had to learn how to do my job first. <laughs> I, uh, that was the one role that I didn't really kind of put any affectation on. I just looked at him. <clears throat> hit the pose, because he was like, save the world, kind of thing. And I thought, you know, like, I don't want to make this silly. I'm just going to just be me and just pitch it up a little bit like that. So. And then he, in the movie, Digimon the movie, you pitched to play like eight years old, Ty. Too. When, yeah, he directed me to do the, the, the little Ty, the little, tie, little what, kid Ty. Yeah. And it was just little, like, it was just, again, I, all I did was I just yeah. pitched it up a little bit. Corey. So, <laughs> So here's another uh, little uh, Digimon story. I'm sorry I'm hijacking your panel. No, please. But, uh, but I was there, and you weren't. <laughs> uh, the original Digimon movie was three movies that we put together to make one, one cohesive movie. But, but I, I did not want to use that third movie. It didn't make sense to me to use it in a big theatrical release to introduce eight new characters, 16 new characters in the last 20 minutes of the movie. I just wanted to do the first two movies together and end it at the end of, you know, the, the bomb falls into the bay and everyone's happy. Izzy vomits over the side of the rail and everything's good. But uh, so I originally had Ty narrating the whole thing. But when... Uh, the powers that be told me I have to use that last movie in the theatrical release. Ty's not in that third part. So how can he say, and then we did this when he's not there? So I had to go back and make Kari the narrator in the whole thing. And I, uh, I, my favorite, which no one will ever see, unfortunately, was the first script I wrote, which had nothing to do with that last thing. It was, it was just Ty narrating, and it was really, I thought, a really tight script. It was a nice 88-minute thing, and you know, first movie you get vetoed a lot, so it didn't happen, but that's life. I'm wondering when you approached Digimon Adventure Try, obviously these characters are not, they are the same old characters that we know and love, but they're, they're a little older, maybe a little wiser. How did you approach these characters when you came back to the series? Or was it just like stepping right back in? Um, for me, it, it kind of was stepping right back in. I kind of had to, um, I asked them to play me what I had done before a little bit, just so I could figure out age-wise where she would go. But um, like what I didn't say before when I was, you know, learning curve, like Joshua said, Sora's voice pretty much sits in my voice. She's pitched up a little bit more too. So then I had to figure out how to make her still sound like her, but older without just sounding like me. Um, <laughs> So that was, you know, but she still has her same characteristics. She's still the mothering, you know, take care of everybody, good friend gal. So um, for me, I think more of the, you know, what's happening in the scene and all of your little acting tricks that you do, you know, who are you talking to, what's happening in the scene, who, you know, what are you doing, what's your purpose, and all of those kinds of things. Um, and then the voice kind of finds itself once you know what's happening. Sure. But, 
I wanted to hear the music, because the music is different, and to me that always carries the tone. Uh, and I, we did have some discussions, like should we keep Ty sounding like Ty, or because they've all aged, is it alright to pitch him down a little, And which of course we did. Uh, but you know, we want to we want to keep that balance of the nostalgia of the original characters, but also bring it forward into current time, which I think the music helped a lot with the fact that it's been updated and it's a little edgier. And, and yeah, I think it clicked. Well, I had a lot of problems. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot of problems with you people. Uh, First of all, I had the worst cold of my life, which Colleen and I did a convention together and I could barely talk. So a lot of times you can hear, Tato Man had a bit of a sore throat in most of this. Um, and I had to actually redo my first set, uh, session of lines because they were just unusable. My voice was so hoarse. And, uh, and I could hear while I'm listening, I'm like, wow, that was, I had a really bad cold. Doing that line, this line. and So, uh, so I couldn't even do the... You know, I was like done. Um, so, so just from a physical aspect, but I didn't need any help getting into the character of Tentomon. Tentomon is not my own voice, as you know. Um, so, but it you, is. This is a put on right now. <laughs> just embarrassed. I wake up in the morning every day like this. This is his panel voice. <laughs> this is my panel voice. Um, but I also had a hard time disconnecting the writer, director of Digimon as just an actor this time. And like I kept, you know, like I said, I was like, you know, that's not how we do it. We do it this way, you know, and it's not going to be consistent. And the fans will know immediately if you're doing that wrong. You know, things like that. Like, for instance, I saw young Jedi at the end there who Ken turned into. You know, it wasn't Ken, obviously. It was young Jedi at the end. And I just saw him, I'm like, oh, am I gonna do these lines too? He's like, why? I'm like, because I'm young Jedi. And you're like, you are? You know? So things like that, I found there was a lot of teachable moments while I was recording. You know, and that's why that's me at the end going, whatever I said at the end. Of it. A memorable line. Yeah, I can't remember the lines. But, uh, but my young Jedi is sort of like, sort of my Harrison Fordish attitude. It's my voice, but it's a Harrison Ford, like, you know, Marion, get to the boat. You know, that's sort of thing. <laughs> I want to give some folks an opportunity to ask your questions because I know you've got them. Yes, ma'am. Saw your hand go up first. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I always remember when we did the premiere for the original movie. Yeah, the movie that, is that was, for me. Yeah. yeah, that was a pretty cool experience and doing it on the back lot at Fox and they sent limos for us and there was legit red carpet and press. Limo? <laughs> you, did, you, you guys didn't get a limo? You no, to, I and, oh. we, and we all I had the we same agent. <laughs> and we had the same agent at the time, I mean. We all had the same director, yeah. yeah. Uh, Whatever. Well, for, I mean... Never mind. I mean, just, <laughs> no, but, you, you know, just to get the opportunity to write and direct a movie uh, that was a big release. It was 1,800 screens at the time, and, you know, it's pretty big. And it was just like, you know, that's why we all came out here, right? Yeah. To be in the movies. Um, one big thing for me was, um, the, this was my, my second show, but my very first anime and because you're dubbing, it airs so much faster than original animation because original animation, they do the recording and then they have to do all the animating and all of that. So it takes a lot longer for that to start airing somewhere. And so it was like just like a few weeks later and I could see it on TV and it was the very first time I actually heard my voice coming out of one of my characters. And I was really excited. And my mom was so, she's like, oh, Digimon is on! We have to watch it! Anything like you, oh my goodness, you know, it's just so funny, and I, you know, so that, that's really exciting for, you know, your very first time for your, you know, oh my God, this is what I came out here to do, and oh my God, I can't read it, you know, dreams coming true. I still get a kick out of hearing my voice on TV, I, I still love it, too. Yeah. it's really, sometimes I'm I talk so upset that seat. they didn't send you a limo, that's just wrong. Yeah, me too. Not only did they send me a limo, they didn't send me a seat at the premiere. What? 
But I had a better experience. I sat with the fans in the back. It was a much better experience. <laughs> Keep telling yourself that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Jeez. Yes, sir, and Robin. Uh, I was wondering, uh, were there any voice um, uh, cast members that you were disappointed? Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> All together? Large. Yes. Uh, large. Uh, large. Uh, I, I had lunch with her when I came to record the first of these three movies, and, and uh, she wanted to be a part of it, but there's some contractual complications and things that kept her from doing it. But, but yeah, she, like, she should have been a part of it. And she, like, it not, should have. She wanted to be, let's say that, but, it, but wasn't, uh, wasn't able to. Uh, Doug Erholtz played TK in season two, a little grown up, and he did not get to play TK in this. He did play... Uh, Another character in this. Yeah. And uh, also, I don't think uh, Michael Lindsay was Joe. He's in DC uh, now, right? Yeah. He's, he's he moved, he moved too. Yeah. Joe is my favorite to write for. I, yeah. loved, I loved Joe and Michael. I've directed many, many times. And uh, it was, you know, it was a little something missing for me for Joe because of that. But he was still very funny in this. Yes, sir. So this is going beyond uh, the three movies, if you know anything about that. But, uh, uh, but uh, I was wondering if you know anything in terms of possibly Ken returning to the <laughs> Jeff knows, but I don't no, think he can tell you. I, I was not, you know, I'm not in the, in the know for this. This I'm I'm on the outside looking in, like all the other actors. <laughs> we we you know I just I showed up and saw the lines for the first time, did them, and immediately forgot them. Jeff, don't let him fool you. Jeff knows. Ask him later at the autograph. Yes, sir. So, with this movie, you can tell, obviously, with the audience, there were so many emotional moments out of the film. What was like a moment that just stood out to you in this film? In this film? Yeah. When craft services showed up. <laughs> Hercules Kabuterimon. So, so that was nice, and I didn't have to whisper. A quick little story about how I came up with the voice for, you know, Kabuterimon, I just like, Kabuterimon, you look monstrous, and this is my generic monster voice. And then they were like, okay, he evolves again to me. I'm like, I can't get bigger than this. <laughs> so... So when you can't go bigger, I decided to go smaller. And I started whispering, Mega Kabuteri Mon. So now Hercules, I'm like, what the? F <laughs> Where am I going to go with this stuff? So I just made him more heroic. Hercules Kabuteri Mon. Yes, sir, in, in the hat. Right, was, yes, sir. Uh, Sorry, I'm very emotional. <laughs> uh, no, it's not that hard to get through. <laughs> when they're late with the paycheck, that's hard to get through. Good answer. Yes, sir. Uh, they're in the green. Uh, green. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a question about how did that start as a voice actor? Like, did it, was it painful? 
<laughs> it can be. Moments, or was it just like you being yourself the whole time? Is this for all of us, I assume? Becoming a, a voice actor? Yeah. Um, it was painful in the sense of, like, heartbreaking and, like, it's really hard to break into. Like, the acting world is this big. The voiceover world is this big. Um, for me, that's all I wanted to do. Like, I came out, I came, moved to L.A. from Michigan, and I had done musical theater, and I just decided, you know what, I don't want to go to, to New York. I don't want to go to Chicago. And somebody heard me doing something, and they're like, oh, you should do voiceover. And I was like, please wait a minute, that's somebody's job. So that was that was it for me. And I did a bunch of research, and L.A. was a place to go. So I I came to L.A., and I started picking people's brains. And it was, But it was, it, it was really hard, and I was taking acting classes and trying to do on camera at the same time, and I was like, I can't split my focus like this. And at the end of the day, that's all I wanted to do was voiceover. That's all I, that's all I wanted to do. So I, you know, I... Got it, you know, which it was, it is, it's hard. I'm like, well, I, I put a tape together and I got an agent, but it wasn't that easy, you know. It was, it was making phone calls and sending postcards and resending my back stuff, then. and yeah, especially it was cassette, yeah. cassette tapes, the internet, right? You'd have yeah, to you couldn't things. just email somebody, it was and costly say, too. Hey, listen <clears> to my <throat> stuff, you know, it was, you had to have things made, so yeah. And I, I mean, I remember a point I had 17 cents in my bank account, literally 17 cents, and I'm like. <laughs> But listen, I, uh, listen, I to, these guys, listen yeah. to these guys' voices, though. It was only a matter of time. Yeah. They ring like a I, bell. The, you know, the, there's a thing on camera where they say the camera loves you. The camera loves us. The microphones love these guys. They're just perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, what you're saying is we have uh, faces made for radio. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. But well, it's ab absolutely right. Like, I, I wanted to do voiceovers more than on camera, a lot more. At, but it took seven years. It's how long? And, and yeah, there was, I don't even get that at 17 cents, but like there was a time where I had like three grand. And I was driving around. I, I was, I was driving, a, well. He was I, driving a limo. I was, I had That's to drive my own limo, limo to go yeah, to the show. I drove my own limo because I had to let the chauffeur go. And those were dark <laughs> days. Dark days. I had to, oh, no, I didn't have great Poupon. I had to just use the regular mustard. Yeah. <laughs> No, 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 seriousness. No, no, seriousness. No, it was like that's how that's how my the two paths diverged in that I was making a living doing magic, do you know, performing up at the Magic Castle and doing mentalism and stuff like that. So over those seven years, I you know that career started to take off, and then eventually the voiceover career started to take off. My and catering career was like. <laughs> Were you, you did that? Yeah. I you would be requested for parties. You do other stuff. You do other stuff. Yeah, like he did I the had, directing, but yeah. you do other stuff, and then eventually. You had to kind of choose, like exactly what yeah. you, I would phrase it exactly the same. You, you can't split your focus because it's like it's like if you like trying to grow a bonsai and never prune it, you know, right. just like or or grapevine, like you just have the 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 spurs go off in every direction, and you're sacrificing growth for diversity of opportunity. You can't just grab every opportunity and expect to achieve, you know, to. Wrote any, any Which is something I had to do. I had to give up my voice acting career because I wanted to be a writer, producer, director. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, I was doing a comedy show, and someone saw me at the comedy show, and I was doing a lot of voices in the show, and they came and we're doing a cartoon called The Mutant League, which was a game at the time, and and uh, they cast me out of that to do like a bunch of voices, and uh, but I really wanted to, you know, I, I was doing voiceover for a while, but. It wasn't where my passion lied. But, but then I started writing, producing, and directing animation. And I was like, well, I'm going to hire myself as an actor. So, so my acting career really took off when I started hiring myself. Brilliant. I, was, Very I, I, smart. I never thought of that. Very smart. Yeah. OK, we have time for just one more quick question. Yes, right here. What is your favorite Digimon? I'm gonna say her own. I'm gonna say Agumon, you know. Like. I, I actually like Agumon too. Yeah. <laughs> Agumon. <laughs> Tentamon, did you all do? Tentamon. <laughs> That's a good one, man. That, that is.
is the perfect answer to the perfect last question. Guys, we want to thank everyone uh, from Toei Animation and Shop Factory. Thank you for coming.